SRAM Force, ETAP, Axis, and Shimano Altegra DI2 are two of the hottest group sets on the market right now. They're the second tier in their respective manufacturers' lineups, and I have put them both head to head to find out which one is better. I need to start out with a thank you to the lovely people at Orbea Bikes. They have furnished me with two Orca race bikes, one with Force ETAP Axis HRD, that's disc version, and one with Shimano Altegra DI2, the R8070 group, which is the hydraulic disc and electronic shifting version of the Altegra group set. I'll start by giving a very quick run through of the key features of these two group sets. So, Force ETAP Axis is a 12 speed wireless group set. It's available in both rim brake and disc brake versions, but it's electronic only. And here we're talking about a two by hydraulic disc group set. They call their hydraulic stuff HRD. Force ETAP Axis is optimized around that 12th cog. It now has a 10 tooth cog on its cassettes, and that means it only works with the XDR driver, which is the road version of the XD driver that launched a few years ago for mountain bikes. Shifting is powered by rechargeable batteries on each of the derailleurs. Remember, everything is wireless. And then there are coin cells in the levers. Shimano Altegra DI2 is an 11-speed, fully wired group set. It launched in 2017, and it's available in both hydraulic disc and mechanical rim brake options. Altegra gets fairly conventional gearing options, although Altegra stuff is compatible with the equivalent GRX gravel components now, so there are some new gearing options more aimed at adventure and gravel bikes, as well as the option to go one by, but there's some compatibility stuff which we'll get into later. Altegra DI2 shifting is via two buttons on each lever, which kind of mimics Shimano's mechanical shifting, and the whole group set is powered by a single central battery because everything is wired together, and that's rechargeable and it's permanently installed inside the bike. So that was a brief overview, let's talk specifics. First of all, SRAM's shifting arrangement is completely different to its mechanical shifting. You might be familiar with double tap on their mechanical group sets where you've got one lever that has like a two-stage movement. On ETAP group sets, it's all about two paddles. One paddle for an easier gear, one paddle for a harder gear. Press both paddles and you shift your front derailleur. This is a system that's really easy to explain to the uninitiated because it doesn't require a great understanding of what's actually going on with your gears. By contrast, Shimano's system mimics mechanical shifting. So on your right hand shifter, you've got an up and a down button to do your rear derailleur. And on your left hand shifter, you've got an up and a down button to do your front derailleur. It will make a lot of sense to experienced cyclists. It's probably harder to explain to a random stranger on the street than SRAM system. Shimano's shifting buttons are very close together on each lever. This is something that they've always been a little bit criticized for with DI2 because it can be hard, particularly if you're wearing a thick pair of winter gloves to differentiate between the buttons. But like anything, you do get used to it. I really like the feel of Shimano's buttons. They have a nice damped feel to them. They feel quite good quality, maybe a little bit nicer than the click of the ETAP shifters, but they aren't nearly as clearly differentiated because with ETAP, it's simply one paddle in each hand. Both SRAM and Shimano give you the option to not think about your front shifting at all. SRAM calls this sequential shifting, Shimano calls this synchronized shifting, but it is effectively the same thing where you simply shift up or down and let the system worry about when that front derailleur moves. Not all riders will want a computer deciding when to shift the front derailleur. You can run the system fully manual, but for those riders, there is also a halfway house option, which Shimano calls semi-synchronized shifting, or semi-synchro if you prefer, and SRAM calls compensation shifting, which is where you do all your normal shifting actions and you shift your front derailleur. But as you shift your front derailleur, the rear derailleur moves a couple of cogs and that gives you a smoother progression through the gears. I personally have generally always been of the view that I would rather choose when to shift my gears myself. Having said that, I've used the compensation shifting, or semi-synchronized if we're talking Shimano, option quite a bit now. I do actually really like it because it does mean that 
when you shift your front derailleur, you just get a very natural next gear. The only downside is if, say, you were cresting a hill and you shift into your big ring, the rear derailleur is going to move in the wrong direction at that point. But in practice, that usually doesn't matter very much. Both the group sets here offer quite a high level of customization. You can assign functions to different buttons if you want to fiddle with your overall shifting arrangement. You could even swap them around if you wanted. With Shimano, there are actually an extra set of hidden buttons on top of your shifters and you can use those for extra functions such as scrolling through the screens on your Garmin or even turning on a set of lights. Both group sets also let you add extra switches. SRAM calls them blips and Shimano calls them satellite shifters or sprint shifters. For example, you can mount them on the tops if you want to be able to shift while you're climbing without moving your hands back down to the hood. Both manufacturers also give you reach adjustment and bite point adjustment at the lever using little Allen keys. There's not a huge range of movement on either, but it's very useful and it's an improvement over group sets of old where there really wasn't much scope for adjustment. Shimano's front shifting can feel a tiny bit quicker because unlike SRAM, it doesn't have to decide if you meant to press buttons simultaneously. SRAM needs to make sure that you weren't just shifting one after the other. However, in practice, that's a tiny, tiny difference. I do think SRAM deserves a lot of kudos for taking a clean sheet approach when it originally came up with ETAP. What they've come up with is, in my opinion, a much more elegant solution. Overall, in the real world though, both group sets shift really, really well. Force ETAP Access is obviously a wireless group set, so it's inherently quite elegant. You've still got hydraulic hoses to contend with, but there are no wires whatsoever. The flip side to that is, of course, that you have to have separate batteries for the derailleurs, and that does mean that they're reasonably chunky. Also, SRAM's levers are quite a lot chunkier than Shimano's. They've got quite a pronounced hump to contain the hydraulic master cylinder, and I personally think that adds a little bit too much visual weight to the front of the bike. I'm sure some of you will like that though because it does give the bike quite an aggressive look. Force ETAP Axis's finish is relatively muted, even a tiny bit plasticky when you look up close at the components. I think that's probably intentional. SRAM wants people who want bling to buy red, the flagship group set, so you have to give up that aesthetic glamour if you want to drop down to the next level. Saying that, it's a very modern look that really suits a kind of aggressive aero bike or something that's very up to date. Altegra DI2 is a wired group set and that naturally means that it's messier than ETAP. Some bike makers do a much better job than others of hiding DI2 wires, but basically you're always going to have more to deal with and certainly building a bike is more complicated with DI2 because you have to route those wires through the frame and connect the junction boxes. Shimano's levers, however, are very, very slick. I think Shimano's done a really incredible job of packaging hydraulics and electronics together. The finish on Altegra DI2 is really nice as well. I think there's less of a drop down from Durace than you get by dropping down from the top level with SRAM. Durace has got that extra bling with more of the like fade effect on the cranks and stuff, but Altegra really is quite a fancy looking group set. So who wins on the aesthetics front? I'm going to say it's still a draw because ETAP is tidier, but personally I do really like the way Altegra looks. Let's talk gearing and component options. When SRAM launched its Axis group sets, it kind of shook up its gearing quite significantly. Axis is 12 speed, and that means starting with a 10 tooth cog, and so the traditional gear ratios kind of go out the window. SRAM calls its new gearing X range, and with it, it's introduced new crank ratios that do away with the traditional double, compact, etc. At force level, that means a 4633 crank option and a 4835 to replace your kind of compact and mid compact traditional options. At red level, you also get a 5037 tooth option, which is your meaty standard double replacement. The logic behind this, of course, is that with that 10 tooth cog, all of the gearing can shift to smaller cogs, smaller chain rings, just makes everything smaller. 
Also, like the rest of SRAM's road group sets, Force ETAP Axis is quite happy to be run one by, and you've got a whole range of chainring sizes for that as well. The new cranks use SRAM's dub bottom bracket design, which is a 29mm spindle, and it works across pretty much every frame bottom bracket platform out there. Match to the new cranks are 10 to 26 tooth, 10 to 28 tooth, and 10 to 33 tooth cassette options, which give you the choice of more tightly spaced gears or a really good range that should do for pretty much anybody. The lowest gear you can get with a standard force setup, therefore, is 33-33, and the highest gear you can get is 48-10, which should be more than enough for most of us, but as I say, you can use that red crank if you need a bigger gear up front. Incidentally, it's one rear derailleur for all cassette options, so again, you don't need to think too hard about compatibility here. Also, the road axis group sets are compatible with Eagle Axis mountain bike group sets, which opens up another whole avenue of extreme gearing if you want something ridiculous for your loaded touring three-inch tired adventure bike or something. Altegra Di2 is still 11 speed and Shimano keeps things relatively traditional with its gearing options. So you've got your standard double 5339, your mid compact 5236 and your compact 5034 and that's it. Oh and there is also like a cross 4636 but that's kind of a bit of a separate option. Cassettes range from a very racy 11 to 25 all the way up to a basically mountain bike cassette 11 to 34 tooth. You should pay attention to compatibility here because there are two rear derailleur options with Altegra Di2. There's the short cage SS version, which goes up to a 30 tooth cassette nominally, and there's the medium cage GS version, which goes up to a 34 tooth cassette. Altegra Di2 is two by only by default. However, you can mix Altegra Di2 parts with their equivalent GRX parts and that gives you one by options as well. The only caveat to that is that you're supposed to use GRX front derailleurs with GRX cranks because the chain line is very slightly different. So if you mix and match too much, you might find that things don't work optimally. So who wins on the component choice and gearing front? I'm gonna give it to SRAM because their new approach to gearing makes a whole lot of sense. There's loads of choice for different types of bike and there are fewer compatibility issues to trip you up. For everyday, real-world riding, both Shimano and SRAM's hydraulic disc brakes work really, really well. There's loads of power, there's plenty of modulation. They do feel different from one another, but basically they both work perfectly, so there isn't really a good reason to choose one over the other. One small difference that's worth noting is that pad clearance is larger with Shimano brakes, which means that when the pads are retracted back into the caliper, they run a little bit wider on Shimano. Now normally this makes absolutely no difference, but if you have a very slightly bent rotor, or if there's a lot of grit and grime getting on your discs, it's more likely that you're going to hear a little bit of scraping with the SRAM brakes because the pads are just that little bit closer to the rotor. So who's better on the braking front? You could say Shimano for the pad clearance thing, but there's really nothing in it. Let's talk about that most millennial of group set concerns, connectivity. Both Force ETAP Axis and Altegra Di2 let you connect to other devices to customize features and monitor performance and various other things. SRAM makes your life quite a bit easier on this front. All you need is a smartphone with SRAM's Axis app and then you can connect directly to your derailleurs and levers. That lets you monitor battery life, you can choose which of the additional shifting modes you might want to activate, you can reassign functions, all that stuff. Shimano's approach to connectivity is a little bit less straightforward. You can make a wired connection to your group set using the Di2 charger, which you then connect to a laptop running Windows. There isn't an iOS option, so take note of that. The alternative is that you pony up in the UK about £75 for the EW-WU111 wireless adapter. That's a Bluetooth device that fits in line with your cables in your system and it lets you connect to the eTube app that runs on phones and tablets and it does let you perform various diagnostic functions as well as assigning features, rearranging, shifting um, and all that good stuff. 
One small defense of Shimano here, you can switch between the three shifting modes, manual, synchronized, and semi-synchronized, simply using the button on the junction box. But if you want to do any of that extra customization or diagnostic stuff, you do need some form of interface, whether that's the wireless one or the wired one. So who wins on the connectivity front? SRAM by a landslide is just much, much easier. What are the practicalities of living with an electronic group set? From a mechanical perspective, it's like any other group set. What you don't have is shifter cables to gum up, so your shifting, once set, stays put, which is lovely. The one thing you do have to do is keep your batteries charged. With SRAM, you've got your derailleur batteries, which generally speaking last a few weeks of riding. Obviously, it depends how often you shift, how much you're riding, but that's the kind of order of magnitude we're talking about. You've also got the coin cells in the levers, which last a really long time. SRAM reckons around two years, so you almost don't think about those until you do think about them because they've run flat. But you've probably bought a new bike by that point, so who cares? If one of your ETAP derailleur batteries goes flat, you could always swap them around temporarily just to make sure that you're in the right gear to get you home. So that's a nice little get out clause. Altegra DI2 runs everything off a single central high capacity battery. This lasts a really long time. Shimano reckons you'll get at least 2,000 kilometers. Again, it depends how often you shift and it's very easy to check the battery life. Um, you just hold down one of the shifters and then you get an indicator light, which has a different color according to the level of charge. If you're dumb enough to flatten your battery, you lose front shifting first, so you can still ride home. You're not stuck in one gear the whole way. The slight danger with Shimano is that the battery requires charging so infrequently that it's easy to forget to charge it at all. I'd probably suggest people do it every two or three months just to make sure that they're not in danger of flattening it out on a ride. On the day-to-day -day practicality front, I'd say it's a draw between these two group sets. Their requirements are very slightly different, but neither of them makes undue demands on the rider, and both of them give you so much battery life that it tends not to be something that you worry about. Let's talk about weight. Now, this is a little bit tricky because I don't have two absolutely identically spec bikes. What I'm not gonna do is tell you the weight of the bikes because that is not really helpful information in this case. Basically, I'm gonna try and extrapolate from a combination of claimed weights and actual weights what we've got here. So, SRAM says that a typical force ETAP axis group set is gonna weigh a total of 2,812 grams. That's with a 48, 35 tooth crank, 175 mil arms, 160 mil rotors, pretty middle of the road setup. In its lightest standard configuration, Shimano says that Altegra DI2, R8070 that is, weighs 2,452 grams. However, they've been a bit cheeky with that number because that doesn't include the battery, which obviously you can't do without, or any of the cables, which you also can't do without. I reckon that stuff adds around about 110 grams. And if you move up to a more typical size cassette, because they've quoted numbers for 1125, if you move up to an 11 to 28 and 160 mil rotors rather than 140s, you're looking at a total group set weight of about 2,620 grams, give or take. Need to be careful though here, because first of all, we're dealing with claimed weights, and also there are a huge number of variables in group set weight, particularly with Shimano, because different frames will require different length cables, and you can choose to have different combinations of components. So, who's lighter? It appears, with the best information that we've got, that Shimano is lighter on this one. However, we're only talking about a difference of around 190 grams, give or take. So. Really, in the wider scheme of things, they're very, very close in weight. Weight would not be a reason for me to choose one group set over the other. Pricing on group sets is a bit of a minefield because if you go online and search for one of these group sets, you'll find some deals that are really heavily discounted over the retail prices. So what I'll give you is approximate retail prices and then a kind of approximate best price in the real world. SRAM Force ETAP Axis retails in the UK at about £2,274. The best real-world price that I can find in the UK in December 2019 is about £1,650. 
Shimano Altegra Di2 retails at just over two grand, about £2,005. The best online price I can find, again, right here, right now, is about £1,330. All in all, that means that you're looking at Altegra Di2 being around about £300 cheaper than Force ETAP Access. So, that's all of the detail about the group set. But which one is actually better? On paper, Force ETAP Access seems like a clear winner. It's got an extra cog, it's 12 speed rather than 11 speed. It's easier to set up, you don't have to worry about routing cables, the connectivity aspect of it is much simpler, and the component options are less confusing as well. With Shimano, if you're building a bike from scratch, you are going to have to think about wiring arrangements, you're going to have to route those wires. It is definitely more complicated at the get-go. On the other hand, once that stuff's done, you don't really think about it, you just ride your bike. So, Logic says choose SRAM, but there are still some valid reasons why you might prefer Altegra Di2 over Force ETAP access. For starters, Altegra is cheaper than Force by a small but not insignificant margin. Also, I personally feel that Altegra Di2 is a better looking group set. Obviously it's not wireless, so you do still have those wires to contend with, but in terms of overall finish, Shimano does a better job of creating the impression of quality. Not actual quality, just perceived quality. Shimano also makes levers that are much less bulbous than SRAMs, and they have a reassuring solidity to them when you're braking and shifting. That's all quite subjective stuff though, and I'm sure that there are riders out there who will prefer the less glossy styling that you get with 4C Tap Axis. It's very much a matter of personal taste. On the weight front, we talked about those small differences. Altegra seems to be a little bit lighter, but it's so close, it just wouldn't really figure in a decision for me. Both group sets are light enough, and if you're really worried about weight, why are you buying a group set with hydraulic brakes? Get rim brakes, they still work. I really, really like SRAM's very simple and intuitive approach to shifting, and they deserve a lot of praise for that. And on the user-friendliness front, connectivity is an area where SRAM just completely roasts Shimano. It's just so much more straightforward. But on the other hand, you don't get those extra buttons which you can use for extra functions with SRAM shifters. Ultimately, both Force ETAP Axis and Altegra Di2 are really, really good group sets. They're very capable, they give you sufficient component choices, and they work very well in the real world, both in terms of shifting and braking, and there's loads of adjustability built into both of them and loads of scope for customization. Group set choice is a very personal thing. We all have our prejudices about components, we all choose things for different reasons. If I were spending this much money on a group set, I wouldn't buy either of these, I'd buy mechanical Shimano Duros, because that's the one that stirs my heart. But to each their own. Which group set would you rather have on your bike? Let us know in the comments, don't forget to like and subscribe, and please hit that little bell icon so you get notified about all of our videos.